the Nintendo Switch is finally coming to the end of its lifespan. As a new Switch successor is just ahead in the near future, and the final games for the Nintendo Switch have been announced in the last Nintendo Direct, I feel like this puts the final nail in the coffin for the Switch, and now would be the perfect time to look back. The Nintendo Switch, in a nutshell, was basically everything that Nintendo did right crammed into one device. The DS and 3DS were portable consoles that could be taken anywhere and were a massive success. The Wii utilized motion controls like nothing else before it and ended up bringing gamers and non-gamers together to play on it and was also a massive success. And the Wii U was able to be a handheld and a home console at the same time, technically, but wasn't that massive of a success. So Nintendo took everything that worked for each of those and seems like they put it all into one console and that's what we have today. The Switch really feels like if Nintendo took the Wii U and rethought everything they did and made sure to play a safe route after the colossal failure of their last console. And I mean, the best-selling Switch game is literally a deluxe version of a Wii U game, Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart single-handedly on its own sold six times more than the Wii U sold in its entire lifespan. But for the Nintendo Switch, I feel like in some parts they may have played it too safe. The Switch itself doesn't feel like there are many risks taken whenever they were making this. Their marketing was very direct, and it made sure that people knew that this was a completely new console, and not just a new controller. And the complete styling of the Switch and the whole aesthetic of it was very... How do, how do I put this? Um, Very bland. This home screen has to be the most boring user interface that I've ever seen. And do not even get me started on the themes menu. And the main reason I say this is because, you know, there are just so many choices on the themes menu that I just get overwhelmed whenever I see it. And you know, there are just way too many to pick from on here, okay? Starting from the very top of the list, we have basic white, okay? This is a common theme, this is clean, this is sleek. You know, I can't really think of anything else to say about this. Um. Yeah, I can't really think of anything else to say about this. And then up next, we have basic black. This is somewhat of a less clean look, but I feel like it is a lot easier on the eyes and just a lot less bright. And that's really all I have to say. And then next up, that's it. That's all that is on the Switch themes menu. They dedicated an entire settings page to two themes. And I feel like these themes aren't even like considered themes. This is literally just light and dark mode. This could be on its own section and just like display or something. This does not have to be a whole themes thing. And I remember whenever I first saw this on the menu, whenever I first got my Switch, I was excited for it. Cause usually themes mean like it's themed after something. It's not just like light mode. <laughs> and I mean, think back to the 3DS themes that you could get where you could either select them or buy them. And you know, if you can buy them, we know how much Nintendo likes money. So I don't know why they didn't do this. Themes are also just a big part of making making the console feel like what that it's really yours at least and a lot of the consoles around this time had so many different options that you could pick from for themes so i don't know why the switch didn't and i mean the rest of this ui on this console is the worst that i've seen this is the most bland for every single part of it and i don't know it just doesn't really have that nintendo charm that it used to have and the rest of this ui is just the most boring that i've seen out of any nintendo console before hell even any console before at all i mean compare this home screen to the wii u home screen it just feels like the wii u home screen had so much life to it and the nintendo switch really just doesn't but also at the same time that might have been one of the main reasons that this console was so successful was it complex it wasn't hard to figure out whenever you're first getting into it and if this was your first nintendo console or even your first console it'd be pretty easy to get used to the nintendo switch was truly my first console console i've always been the type to prefer a handheld or a console that you can just take with you or even a just knock off mobile games those were always so fun and i just prefer that over like a big xbox or anything like that and i mean i had all the time in the world to just absolutely terrorize the people that were on my tamadachi life island or play Mario Kart for hours on end. I don't know if that totally wasn't the only thing I ever did on that thing. But just kind of around this time, those type of games just got kind of boring for me. And I feel like it was starting to become time to upgrade. And also at this time, Fortnite was kind of freshly blowing up. And, you know, I kind of wanted to play that too. And my friends were playing that. So, you know, of course I just wanted to play that. So I had three choices of things that I was going to think about either getting for like Christmas or saving up for or something like that. First up, it was the Xbox One. Okay, so... Basically, I can't bring it with me places. There are less fun and entertaining games for someone when I'm kind of younger and stuff like that. And also, it really has, high, it has like pretty high and good performance at the time. Then next, it was the PlayStation 4. 
Same problems as the Xbox. Also, probably the worst controller in the world, truly. I mean, I, I genuinely hate the DualShock or whatever they called it. That controller was just really flimsy and tiny, and I have, ma I have massive hands. Like, look at this. You can't, I don't know if you can tell. And I don't even have a PlayStation 5 or a PlayStation. I've never had a PlayStation in my life. I will absolutely glaze the hell out of um, the DualSense controller. That is the best, that's the highest quality controller you can get. I don't even have a PlayStation. I said that before. I just use it for my PC. And also the PS4 had somewhat good performance too. And then we get to the Nintendo Switch. I can take it anywhere. Mario. <laughs> and terrible performance compared to all the other consoles being sold at this time it had about half the power that a lot of like the cheapest consoles you could get of this generation were hence the reason why i called this the best worst console the overall power on this seems slightly better than what i could see the wii u being able to do and this was released the same year that the xbox one x was released which was like a complete powerhouse compared to the switch from like a nerd number perspective I can understand why a lot of people would think this would be the worst console that you could get, mainly due to the statistics that a lot of game companies and a lot of console companies show that their their, their next gen console can do five times faster than their previous one to be able to play no games. The only thing that a lot of new consoles really have going for them is their high capability to play games and like the highest graphics and like on their ray tracing stuff and everything like that. But it's very rare that people are just getting them for like a specific franchise or a specific game because a lot of games anymore are on like PC, um, console, everything. But with the Nintendo Switch and a lot of Nintendo products, it never had to really be the graphics. I mean, if it works with Mario Kart, I'll be honest, I don't really, I don't really care that much. The difference I've noticed between Nintendo and a lot of other tech companies is that they're not really super spec based. I mean, if they have a good feature or something that really makes them original, it just already sets them out from other consoles like that. They don't really have to just go for, oh, I can run gta 5 with one more frame per second that also makes the chances of you wanting to buy it a lot higher because they have something that's new and different compared to a lot of the other things that you can buy i mean the main reason a lot of old nintendo consoles sold well was because they had a feature that kind of made them stand out from other consoles and they always have like one big feature that's really their selling point but with the switch i feel like they combined all of their best aspects they have a handheld console touchscreen home console, ability to play family games and be casual, and to be an actual gamer's gaming console, and everything else in between. And that was the issue with a lot of previous Nintendo consoles. Some people didn't really feel like it was the thing to get if you were wanting to actually take games seriously. Every person, there was something that you could do on a Switch, which would most definitely explain why the Nintendo Switch outsold every single console in this generation and most past generations. I think it's the third best selling console on the market just think about all the like the nintendo exclusive games that were on this console there are like countless ones that like you've formed memories on or just been able to play more than anything else i mean it just really feels like anymore the nintendo games and the games on like nintendo consoles are really the only ones fun left i mean unless it's a new game that just released on pc or something those only last a little bit too these it, games on the switch really feel like timeless i feel like whenever the new switch i because i'm pretty sure it'll be backwards compatible these will still hold up and this console and the features it had were really like nothing else i mean just think about like how xbox and like playstation have found like ways to cloud play your games and still be able to take your games with you but the switch you can just and that's it it can literally just switch into a handheld I said switch. There were also no set boundaries, like the problems that were between the 3DS and the Wii U, whereas like there's, it felt like there was like a barricade in between those two. Like they just feel very separated. But with this, it was just the same machine. If you were buying a home console game, it could also turn into a handheld console game. And the controllers had built-in motion controls for if you were playing games that needed those, but they could also just be turned into controllers that you can use for like just actual intense games rather than having to go out and buy like a classic controller or a pro controller. And if you really did want to go pro, there's always something out there for you to be able to get. And there are countless other accessories for the console too. The Switch could really just be used however you wanted it to be, which is really what leads me to try to think about what the next console could bring. I'm really hoping it won't turn out like the Wii U and it'll just feel like an upgrade for something that you already have and people will think it's an upgrade for something you already have. I know I, I'm probably going to buy it anyways, but I just don't know what else it could bring. And the Switch OLED had already brought some upgrades that people wanted for the screen and the FPS, so it can't really be a graphical thing unless they make 
higher graphic games and stuff like that. So this next console is probably going to have to end up being something completely different. The Nintendo Switch will always be an iconic console, and it has been for the longest time. But with these new generation consoles that have been being released and everything, the power just really doesn't hold up anymore. So on their next console, they're really going to have to step it up. I mean, the only issue I have ever had with my Nintendo Switch is just the fact that it can barely hold up FPS in games, especially games that aren't made by Nintendo. But only time will tell to see what Nintendo is going to bring out next and what will be the next big thing.